You're watching us here on a Diwali special of Mad About Markets. It's Diwali, we indulge in Ritu. What is our favourite indulgence? Sweet, of course. Laddus, chocolates, anything. Or both. I mean, uh, chocolates are really gaining traction, right? More and more hampers that are coming your way are chocolates which you don't really share. I don't share. I eat all of them and that's always on top of mind. Because it's Diwali, we take those liberties. Chocolates, that's what we're talking about. Well, that is what we're talking about and that is what India is going to be talking about because the entire confectionery space in the country, which accounts for all your chocolates, your hard boy candies, lollipops, eclairs, gums, and that's a mouthful, and mint as well. That is worth about 26,000 crore rupees as per Euro Monitor. But chocolate, that is what we're talking about. That is the biggest contributor at over 15,000 crore rupees as of 2022. And it grew from a little over 12,000 crores as of 2019. And you can see the trajectory. And by 2027, it is expected to cross 23,700 crore levels. Mangalam, what is really powering this chocolate train in India other than our appetites? Our appetites, for sure. Sure, but you know, it's uh, the classic template for Mad About Markets, growing population, growing disposable income, and it's lending itself to the growth that we're seeing in the chocolate market as well. Shifting consumer taste, people are looking at exploring uh, newer avenues of sweet consumption, rising middle class disposable income. They've been key growth drivers for the mass chocolate market, which accounts for the majority of the 15,500 crore that Ritu just spoke about. But increasingly, there is a fascination, love for international luxury chocolate experiences. There are a lot of local artisanal brands coming in. And now there is also the increased awareness of health benefits of dark chocolate. Whatever be the reason, people are spending a lot of money and a lot of waste share is what the chocolates are gaining these days. Well, a lot of people are gaining waste share, like you said, but these companies are making lots of money. We'll quickly introduce our guests that have all the insights we need today. We have R.S. Sodhi, the Managing Director of Amul with us, also Vikram Karwal, the Senior Director, Marketing at Mondelez India. And also joining us on the program is Kalpesh Parmar, the Country General Manager of Mars Wrigley India. Gentlemen, thank you and welcome on the show. Vikram, I'll start with you. You know, over the years, how has Mondelez increased the market around chocolates? Could you give us some numbers on what kind of consumption trends you're seeing, the occasions when chocolates are used, etc. Yeah, I think uh, our endeavor over the years in Mondelez has been to uh, drive penetration for the chocolate category uh, and also improve consumption, not just in urban areas, but also in rural areas uh, by uh, driving relevance for the category on uh, different occasions, also by introducing uh, different products uh, which cater to different needs uh, for the consumers. Um, so the penetration of the category today stands at about 40%, uh, which means 40% of the consumers are consuming uh, chocolate category at least uh, once a year. Uh, and uh, we have also uh, uh, delivered very strong and relevant uh, communication over the years, uh, which has engaged consumers with the category and uh, driven consideration. Take your point on all those uh, factors that you spoke about because uh, Mondelez has been the key. For India, chocolate market equates to Cadbury Dairy Milk, as we'll find out now. But we also have Kalpesh with us. Kalpesh, you know, uh, from a Mars uh, uh, Wrigley standpoint, we, we have seen a lot of growth drivers. What, according to you, are uh, the drivers and how big, importantly, can it be going forward? Uh, the chocolate category in India is still at a nascent stage. Uh, the consumption in India is probably anything around 300 grams per person per annum, depending on what research piece you see. That means the category is, uh, the chocolate category in India is close to 15,000 crores. Yeah. Now, there is a trend of health and wellness. Apart from that, there is a trend of indulgence or small moments of happiness. So if you combine and give people a bit of nuts, a bit of chocolate, a bit of... Uh, packaged quality products, that's where this category can go from the current 15,000 crores to probably 150,000 crores in the next 10 to 20 years. Yeah, As long as we are able to give the right quality at the right price, at an affordable price. It's not just about operating in the large cities, but how do we uh, have these products offered in markets like Allahabad and Indore also, and not only in the metros. Of course, uh, during COVID, what happened is people were more comfortable while working from home. They wanted to also snack at home. And that's where their comfort level with packaged foods, snacks which are packaged, uh, grew uh, a lot more. And that's where we, we, we've been seeing some uh, great growth uh, in the range of 10 plus 10% in terms of CAGR and 
I think this should continue. As I said, the category should grow from 15,000 crores to uh, much higher uh, numbers in the next 10 to 20 years. And the immediate three years also looks pretty exciting. Well, the pandemic snacking is taking some time to get rid of. But, uh, you know, we've heard from the international players. Mr. Sodhi, for you, how important is chocolate as a category? Of course, Amul has a great brand, great we call. Uh, but, you know, Indian players like Amul do have a lower market share. Well, uh, first thing, let me tell you, chocolate category is a growing category in India because now everybody wants to consume cocoa-based, some sweet things. So, and chocolate meets that requirement. Now, Indian chocolate market is around, as per our estimate, 15,000 crore per annum. It's growing at the rate of 15 to 16%. But Amul is in a different category. We are not in the usual category of um, uh, chocolate with more of sugar and other products. We are, for the last four or five years, we are stressing more on more cocoa-based where chocolate content is or cocoa content is more, maybe 55%, 75%, 85%, even 99%. And right now, if you see value-wise, we are number four, but volume-wise, we are number three. And our market share today is around three to four percent. Okay. And uh, we want, we have seen in that category, growth is coming maximum. I mean, we put up a new plant just three years back, which are 5x of a capacity. And now we are again doubling it. And uh, the way we are growing, the growth rate is 40, 50%. I think in next uh, two years, Amul be a 1,000 crore rupees brand as far as dish dark chocolate are concerned. Well, look, hang on, gentlemen. We're going to talk about the components of the chocolate market as well. But before we do that, Manglam, what is your favorite kind of chocolate? Any kind of chocolate is my favorite, but the one that I actually prefer is the ones which have wafer inside it. It's crunchy and it's got chocolate and it's just all things amazing. Well, you know what? You're in the minority here because what India really loves, because half of the chocolate consumed in India, it is actually in the form of tablet bars, the kind you see from Dairy Milk, Nestle, Amul, etc. And that is almost 45% of the market. 29% is count lines, which you like. You know, that is chocolate filled with nuts, wafers, a toffee, like your Five Star, your Munch, your Snickers, Kit Kat and whatnot. Then you have your chocolates and pouch packs, that's about 11%. A lot of this, uh, us bought this on our birthdays to take to school, right? <laughs> and then you have chocolates that have toys, which are gaining massive popularity. Kinder Joy, you know what I'm talking about. And then 5% is the rest of the market. Now, in what form does India really consume chocolate? The most form, most commonly found one is still milk chocolate, accounting for about 58.5% of the market. Then you have your filled chocolates, the kind you like, about 31%. And 7.7% .7 is dark chocolate. But don't be fooled by the small share of the dark chocolate because this is the category which has been growing faster than the industry and it increased from about 6.5% all the way to 7.7% in just a span of three years. So the question, Manglam, really is, is dark chocolate the dark horse of the chocolate industry? I think you were waiting to make that <laughs> word joke, right? But, you know, at lower levels as well, what it does is it's commanding a fair amount of premium and increasingly consumers are preferring that because we had a survey conducted by Mintel. They said that 37% of Indians strongly associate dark chocolate with health benefits. 39% said that they may also buy chocolates with added vitamins, minerals, etc. And 44% are willing to put their money where their mouth is. They are willing to pay a premium for healthier chocolate. So keeping these things in mind, companies have also tried to, you know, increase their customer base into the health conscious by uh, introducing sugar-free, low-sugar, organic, vegan, gluten-free chocolates for all kinds of diet and health preference. Kalpesh, you know, you're talking about chocolates being an indulgence, but a lot of people are increasingly getting health conscious. How do you c convince health conscious consumers to actually go ahead and consume more chocolate? This, this category, as I said in the beginning, will grow uh, 10x in the next one or two decades if we are able to combine these uh, experience along with uh, health and well-being related products. Like in US today, we have a product called Kind, which is which is large num large amount of nuts with chocolates. You know, so as we move towards a chocolatey experience with a lot of health and well-being uh, included in that, that's where the category will explode. 
Well, healthier chocolates to increase their penetration. But Mr. Sodhi, let me come to you because, you know, Amul is in the premium category products largely. Uh, but the scale and mass, that still belongs to the smaller price points of 5, 10, 20 rupee chocolates. What are your plans on that front? The in Indian market is for the uh, lower end of the market is a bigger scale. And we are going to be in that category. We have got 5 rupees, 10 rupees chocolate. The wafer chocolates are there. Even our regular milk chocolate is there. So we'll be there in lower end of the market also. But when it comes to the dark chocolate, more cocoa content chocolate, or higher end of chocolate, I think Amul is the market leader today. Okay, you want to be the market leader in the dark variant, but also looking at mass products. But Vikram, I mean, uh, how do you, uh, you know, uh, convince the health conscious consumers to go ahead and uh, consume chocolate? I mean, what are the potential growth uh, for sales in that? A lot of consumers are becoming health conscious and they are looking for portion control, uh, but they're also looking for permissible indulgence. indulgence. That's an, uh, another important trend, right? Consumers do believe that it's important to have a healthy diet, but a little bit of indulgence is also part of that healthy diet, right? So that's an important thing to keep in mind, and that's where we come in, right? Uh, see, we are a snacking company, and uh, this is uh, an important issue uh, that is facing our society, and there is no one silver bullet for this. Uh, we are in the business of snacking. We want to uh, build the right snack for the right uh, moment. Uh, but we also want consumers to snack responsibly, right? So we are taking a few initiatives at our end. For example, we want to make sure that the consumers are snacking mindfully and they have all the information on the pack, on the back of the pack, on the front of the pack. We're also focused on making sure that we are improving our current portfolio as much as possible. We are trying to reduce sodium, uh, we are trying to reduce sugar, and we are trying to reduce saturated fat from our uh, products. Take your point, Vikram, and what you do will have ramifications on the industry itself. Let's talk about the industry. And if uh, the color of my jacket is something to go by, we will know who the leader in the chocolate industry is. It's Mondelez, the owners of uh, Cadbury. And they are a leader by a distance. 57.5% market share as per Euro Monitor. And just to tell you the scale of their dominance, they're three and a half times their next biggest player. That is 16% market share coming in for Munch and Kit Kat owners Nestle. The third one is Ferrero Rocher increasing its presence because of the toy chocolate. Uh, Chocolate. We have Mars, which has 2.5% market share. Hershey is at 1.2%. Interestingly, majority of the market is still consolidated within the MNC pack. The top six, we have just one Indian player, GCMMF, which owns Amul at 1.1% market share. In terms of popular brands, I mean, it is understandable that dairy milk will still rule the hearts and mouths of Indians, 30% market share. But we've seen a big jump in the market share of Kinder Joy, 7.3%. Maybe kids loving the toys that come with it, uh, 7% share for gems and five star each and uh, the Nestle brands Munch and Kit Kat six percent each. Uh, Ritu of all these which is your favorite? Well it depends on the day on the mood because you know what chocolate really is as a category is an impulse category. 96 percent of it is still sold offline. Now within that about 77 percent is sold through small local grocers 13% through uh, super and hypermarkets, about 3.1% through food, drinks, tobacco specialists. And I hope people who've been advocating how UPI has killed toffee, <laughs> we've debunked that enough and more on the channel. Now, retail e-commerce, it is still about 4.2% of the overall sales of all chocolates in India. But innovations have been driving growth lately, and we have seen some interesting launches come in from the MNCs. First, let's talk about Mars. Now, Snickers launched Kesar Pista in India in 2022. Uh, Double Mint had Palm Mint for India and Orbit had Raw Mango in 2020. Mondelez too has a Cadbury dairy milk with less than 30% sugar and a dairy milk variant where as they customize Cadbury celebrations and gift boxes for e-commerce, uh, you also have Amul, uh, which is the leader of the premium dark chocolate market with 75%, 90%, 99% and as much as 100% dark chocolate options that are available in the market. I don't know how many takers there are for it yet, but it's fast-growing category. It seems like there are a lot of takers for the Kesar Pista Snickers. <laughs> I personally tried it. It wasn't good as compared to the original Snickers, mm. but I get why a lot of people might like that little bit of Indianness in well, there. Well, not chocolate. for me. <laughs> well, let's ask that to Kalpesh itself. Kalpesh, isn't it ironic that when you want to grow international flavors and the experience and yet launch something like Kesar Pista Snickers, what was the rationale behind that? I think local flavors and inclusions are the way to win in snacking category. Yeah. And again, when it comes from globally loved brands like Snickers 
or galaxy, the, the acceptance from the consumer increases. Why? Because in today's world, we are in a digital world. So while people shop in a, in a local grocery store or a supermarket store or an e-commerce channel, but it should have a social media value. It should be an experience of that brand, which can give them their international experience. You know, so once you combine these uh, things, I think there is a sweet spot city. Well, let's go even more hyper-local. And Vikram, let me put that question to you. Could you give us some sense of the penetration of brands in rural and urban markets? And what are some of the consumption trends that you're seeing playing out there? Rural is a very important market for us. Uh, rural contributes almost one third of our business, right? And if you look at the FMCG industry, it will be contributing roughly one fourth of uh, the consumption that happens in FMCG. So rural is a very, very important driver for us. Uh, it, I think uh, in terms of uh, penetration of the category in rural, it will definitely be lower than urban. Uh, but we have also seen a dramatic change in the last few years. Uh, people are able to afford uh, premium products now in rural. Uh, penetration of the category is increasing. Uh, plus, our presence uh, in rural markets and our distribution is also increasing. Uh, we are focusing a lot on data, uh, on technology, uh, on our presence. Uh, we are building our cold chain uh, very aggressively in rural areas so that consumers are able to access those products which they used to in urban India uh, equally well in rural India as well. They are able to get the same range of products, uh, same choices that the urban consumer is enjoying today in rural areas as well. So that has been our focus to drive uh, rural growth. Uh, we, we definitely see uh, penetration growing, consumption growing, and more importantly, relevance of the category growing in rural areas as well. All right, gentlemen, hang in there. We'll head into a short Kit Kat break. Not sponsored mm -hmm. by Kit Kat, but we will eat one. And on the other side, we'll talk about what's helping float the chocolate industry's boat. And we talk about the key challenges facing the sector in yays and mays. But as always, we'll also ask a bigger question, and that is, in this MNC-dominated market, can Indian brands get a bigger piece from the chocolate industry? Welcome back. You're watching us here on Mad About Markets. This is the Diwali special and we're focusing on the chocolate industry and there's so much to talk. But as always, it's that time of the show when we focus on the yays and the maze. I wonder what could be the maze of chocolate. I mean, everything has to be a yay, right? I know, but we'll try. We'll try. Okay, we'll try. The biggest yay for me is that, you know, India's per capita consumption is just 360 grams per year as compared to developed markets who consume 5 to 10 kgs of chocolate every year. So that's a long way to go. And that sounds delicious. 5 to 10 kgs of chocolate. Yes, it is. But what is the size of that pie? Because the urban market is really saturated. It is the part of the opportunity where players will now have to go to expand. The part of the opportunity is where everyone else is going as well. We've heard from Mondelez, Mars, all of them looking to expand in rural areas to maintain growth and increase their penetration. But you know, this is particularly challenging at a time when the country and the population is becoming more and more portion and health conscious. How do you get them to eat more sugary chocolates? Well, the portion which is getting portion conscious is yeah. a sliver and the urban as well, right? And then there are opportunities in e-commerce offerings. You can order things and send it to people. Gifting, that's a big opportunity. Well, you can order, but therein lies the challenge because you have to maintain it at a certain temperature. There's refrigeration, infrastructure involved. You can't have liquid chocolates getting delivered, right? Yeah, but, you know, it's become a primary sweet for occasion celebration. I mean, hmm. we've seen traditional mithai dabbas, not, if not being replaced, at least being added on to a big chocolate box that one gets as well. But let me ask you, in that chocolate box that you've been getting, how many of those are really Indian brands? It is MNCs that dominate the market here. Yeah, but some of those MNC brands as well have woven themselves into the fabric of India so much that it's hmm. Difficult to imagine India without Cadbury, so to say. And, yeah. you know, a lot of these MNC brands have also launched India-specific flavours. Kesar, Pista, Snickers, anyone? Well, we've talked about what works and doesn't work for the industry, but I guess the biggest question still remains for a growing health-conscious population. How do you, Kalpesh, for instance, drive the growth from 300 grams per person to 2-3 kilos? How will you get them to consume more and drive this penetration? So large, large categories in snacking, let's look at uh, categories like biscuits, they are close to 80% penetration. Categories like chocolates are available in only 50 to 60% of the retail universe. So it is about mental availability 
and physical availability. Yeah, so once uh, the, the, the chocolate players are able to make the products available in 80, 90% of the retail universe, yeah, again, uh, at the same time giving the right price points, then there is a sweet spot sitting over there. That brings us to the bigger question, and which is, can Indian brands get a bigger piece from India's chocolate market? That question to you first, Mr. Sodhi, and then Kalpesh, your thoughts. Yeah, you see, as far as our revenue is concerned, it may not be even today 1% of our total turnover. Because last year it was 61,000 crore. But we feel that in another two, three years, we'll be at least having 10% market share. And I, I tell you, purpose is not only to have high top line or anything. Purpose is to give, provide a better price to the cocoa growers. So once Amul is there or Kemco is there, others also have to pay more price, like we have done in the milk. In the last 20 years, maybe 20 years ago, the gifting was local products or local mithais. And thanks to the great work all the companies have done, today a huge percentage of gifting is through chocolates. And every time someone gifts a chocolate to someone, that's uh, entry into a new household. So I think it's it's going to be an and and. I, I love Indian mithais, I'm a big fan. And I don't think chocolates can replace that happy moment what an Indian mithai gives. But, but with the new generation, they are looking at not just having the traditional experience, but they want experience which they can also talk on Instagram. You know, so that's where a brand like MM comes in and said, Wow, I got this MM pack, and then I'm having that. I'm gifting that during the Diwali season. And that's that's where the category would grow. Having said that, from a 20, 30 year lens, I believe both will coexist. But but the millennials, Gen Zs might be more comfortable with these international experiences or local experiences which they resonate with. So it will be, both will exist, but again, packaged uh, confectionery products will do very well from a long-term or a medium-term perspective. All right, so from the long-term standpoint, uh, Indian Mithais, Indian brands and international brands, all of them will coexist. It will, so long as people like Ritu and me continue to eat all those uh, sweets. But thank you, Mr. Sodhi, Kalpesh, Vikram for joining us and giving us your perspective on uh, the chocolate market. I think they vetted our appetite enough <laughs> for us to just go grab a bite of chocolate. Thank you. And you watching. all have a happy Diwali.